Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you my favorite way to paint skin tones in watercolors. And as you could see from the beginning of the video, I was originally planning to show you my two favorite techniques for painting water skin tones and watercolors today, but I ended up only getting through this one portrait, so I'm going to be showing you the other one tomorrow. And the two techniques are really different from one another, and they yield very different results. And you'll notice that even though I'm talking about skin today, I started with the shirt for this character. And my intention with doing that was to start with a more vibrant, more saturated value so that I would be able to better gauge the values of the skin. And, you know, I did it with good intentions, but ultimately I wish I had done it with painted the hair first, and that would have been more effective for what I was going for, but you'll see that a little bit later on. As far as the technique itself goes, it's basically a pattern of layering on red, yellow, and a blue or purple color. So usually it's basically it's just working with the primaries um, in layers to build up the skin tone. Normally when you think of coloring a skin tone, you might think of starting with a base tone and then adding shadows and maybe some white highlights and that's great but and it has that's the basis of what i'm going to be doing tomorrow but it kind of means that for the most part all of your skin is the same color in your paintings and isn't and now this is far from realistic in the end but it doesn't really portray how skin naturally has a lot of different colors in it and I that's what I really like about this technique is you're able to layer on a bunch of different colors so I started with the red and red is my favorite to start with because it's kind of the blushy color so I start with red and put red in areas where I know there will be blush or more blood flow like around the cheekbones, around the eyes I like it, the tops of the ears, the nose, and also the top of the neck I like it there as well. And sometimes around the edges of the face. And then after that I went in and started adding my yellowish golden color. And try not to think of the yellow as a light source but more of just a glow. So if red represents blood flow, the yellow will represent more just um, life and vi vivacity and vitality in the skin. So yellow is kind of the closest to what would be like a natural peachy sort of skin tone um, in, in this palette that I'm using. But yeah, the yellow is just kind of that the warmth really, the warmth of of the skin. And then I use like a bluer or purplish color like you're seeing here for shadows and also recessed areas. So it's really good for defining the shadow, like the cast shadows like under the nostrils or under the eyelids like here or even like where the hair casts a shadow on the forehead. It's really great for that too. And really this process overall is just going back and forth between those three colors, between purple, yellow, and red. And it's a really good idea, like I said, to start with a more saturated value or something even of a darker value so that you don't get to a point where you put the darker part in and then realize how light everything else is. And that's what happens to me almost every time I paint skin. And you'd think I would learn and just paint the hair first, but I never do. I mean, I think there was like one time where I painted the hair first, and that was when I did my portrait of Howl from Howl's Moving Castle, and there's a video for that if you want to check it out. And I think that was one of the few times that I actually painted the hair first, and it worked. <laughs> I'm so glad I did it. So with this one, after I did my first few skin layers, I kind of knew that my values weren't set. I knew that I was going to have to make things darker and more vibrant, but I knew I also wasn't going to be able to properly gauge how dark things should be until I started making other decisions and putting other things in. So I did the eyes and the lips next. So I did the lips first. And then with the eyes, how I generally like to approach eyes is to 
wet the entire iris area and then put two or so colors in there with a brighter, more vibrant color towards the bottom. If you guys would be interested in seeing a video specifically on how I usually paint eyes in watercolor, there's a couple different ways that I like to do that. Just let me know and I would be happy to make that video for you. Oh, and oh, 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 I wanted to say this at the beginning. So if you're, you know, five and a half minutes into this video and still watching, I just want to say welcome to the new subscribers because there have been quite a few new people subscribing lately and I know that not everybody makes it this far into the video, but if you're still watching, hello, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I, I've just been, it's been so exciting for me to see all of the new people coming in and watching and leaving comments and likes and, and views and all that stuff. It just, it's so, so, so exciting for me to get to share this stuff with other people and get to talk to you guys about not just what I'm creating, but like the, the things we discuss in videos, like that's, that's exactly why I'm doing this. So here we can see, this is when I got started on the hair and it's crazy. Cause like, as soon as you start putting the hair in, all of a sudden the skin looks so light and it's like all that color that we added. It's like, did we even do that? Did we even add color to the face? Yes, we did. But without having a darker value to gauge how dark our values were getting, like even when I was nervous that my reds were too red or my shadows were too dark, they're so far from it because everything just so light. And usually when this happens to me, I wanna just go, okay, this is good enough. I'm not doing any more layers. Because usually with a technique like this, what happens is when you start to add more red, you realize, oh yeah, I need some more yellow. And then you add some more yellow and you go, oh, I need some more purple. And it goes like that uh, repetitively over and over until you get to a point where you're like, okay, now my values are good. And you can get there, you will get there. And maybe if you're not as timid as I am and you try this technique, you'll get there sooner than I did. <laughs> Cause I ended up having to go through with several layers, which is kind of what I'm showing you guys now. And I did leave in some bits of things in this video that I might normally have cut out into a, like a normal time-lapse painting. And that's just because I wanted to show you more of the technique that I used for this and generally how that worked and what you're mostly seeing with the exception usually of the shadows is I would lay down a color and then come in with clean water and blend it out. And that allows the colors to kind of flow seamlessly into one another without being too harsh. Um, and the reason I don't do that as much with the shadows is they usually have more often have the harder edges if especially if it's a cast shadow so if something is casting a shadow onto the skin that shadow is a little bit harder and in the places like these where you see me kind of smoothing out that shadow with water and kind of like allowing that to blend out that would be more of like a curvature shadow so a shadow that's caused by the curving of the face so this the head is turning away from you because of the forehead or the cheekbone Nothing's casting a shadow on that area, but it still is having less light on it because it's curving away from the light source. So that's a little bit of things about things for you. Anyway, <laughs> when I finally got the values to a point where I was happier with them, I went in and put white all over the place because that's what I do. I like to just put white highlights all over everything. And I also went in one more time with my darkest value with that darker purple color and made everything a little bit darker in some spots. The spots when you're doing a portrait that tend to be the darkest are places like here, like the holes of the nostrils. Also where the lips meet, the outer corner of the mouth, and then underneath the chin, those areas tend to be the darkest. So, um, as far as the face goes and then also like the corners under the eyes so i just kind of go into some of those places that i wanted to be a little bit darker and the reason that i like this technique so much is because you can experiment and just because you also take kind of similar colors and do the same technique you may find that your piece looks completely different from mine and part of the reason there's so much space for 
variety in a technique like this is there's more than just one shade of red and there's more than just one shade of purplish blue color and there's more than one shade of yellow and you can use them in different quantities and in different amounts and you can change up how you're using those things and i hope you guys don't mind a little bit more real-time footage here because i did not want to run out of time to talk about this anyway yeah if if you use these same techniques with different colors or in different combinations you can really switch up what you're doing and the order that happens in and even that one more layer can make a big difference like even just this last layer of the darkest color that i did i feel like made such a big difference to making the piece look more finished and one last little tip for you here is if you have drafting tape that you're peeling off and you'll see at the beginning I had that green embossing tool and I did that on all of the sides. I used that to heat up my tape before I take it off and that tape comes off way, way, way easier if you heat it up first. So if you don't have an embossing tool, you can also use a blow dryer and that for me has been the easiest way to remove tape. And there you go. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll have another portrait painting day tomorrow and I'll see you then. Bye.